So the other day, I read this story. A woman came home screeching her car into the driveway and ran into the house. She slammed the door and shouted at the top of her lungs, Honey, pack your bags. I won the lottery. The husband said, Oh my goodness, what should I pack? Beach stuff or mountain stuff? Doesn't matter, she said, just get out. <laughs> she thought that was hilarious. She I came to that me. Was really, really funny. I was like, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting that ending, so I thought it was pretty you, funny. Yeah, but you, you thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real life and relationships are complicated, right? It's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> Last week we touched on detoxing in order to become a better you, and today we are talking about building healthy relationships. Now, now it would be like impossible to cover everything, but we do want to cover a few things, a few right. a few principles. Yep. A yep. few things that that are necessary in building right. a healthy relationship. Absolutely. And really, there's no formula or a manual on having a healthy and long-lasting relationship. But as Dan just said, we want to go over several keys or principles that could help to build a healthy relationship. And the first one is connection. There's got to be a, connect, a connection, right? Now, and this is wh whether you're here and whether you're single, whether you're here and you're dating, mm -hmm. whether you're here and you're married. This applies in different ways, but yeah. but these keys apply to no matter what situation or place you're in in, in life. Yeah. There's got to be a connection. There's got to be a connection. Uh, so speaking of connection, <laughs> we just recently were informed on how teenage relationships happen these days. Have you heard this? And the different phases. Because obviously we know there's the dating phase and then there's being married. So apparently in the teenage relationship phases, there's the crush. And then there's the talking phase, which could go two directions. It could either go to the dating phase or it can go to the disconnect phase. And we're like, wait, what is all of this? <laughs> this what? is so complicated. This is a, the only one who understood it was my dad, by the way. He's like, it makes perfect sense. Yes, I got it. <laughs> he got it. He got it. <laughs> uh, the, that's, not, that's not the stages that we went through. No. You see, when we met, I wasn't, I, not only was I not, looking to date anyone, I was refusing to even go out on a date. I was flying into Cincinnati to speak at a friend's church, and uh, we were going to hang out for a few days afterwards. And uh, he ended up, because there was another common friend of ours who pastors in downtown Chicago, and when he found out I was flying into Cincinnati, he asked the pastor from Cincinnati to speak at his church that same day in Chicago. So my friend from Cincinnati was like, hey, why don't you fly to Chicago and let's hang out in Chicago? Chicago's way better than Cincinnati. <laughs> I was like, it's awesome. And the guy he was speaking for was a friend of mine. I'd actually known him since we were kids. Mm -hmm. Like, we're talking super young. I was his youth pastor in 1997, 98 in Chicago. Uh, like, we go way back. At that time, what you don't know is that that's her sister's husband. Mm -hmm. So her sister... And him pastored in Chicago. We had never met, but I had known her sister and her sister's husband for a long time. So anyway, go. F I'm speaking in Cincinnati, hop on a plane, fly to Chicago. At dinner on Sunday night, it's me, it's my friend Marcus who pastors in Cincinnati. It's her sister, Allie, her husband, Kent, and her mom happened to be in town. So we're all out at dinner. Now, I knew her mom because... As a kid, we would, my grandma and grandpa lived up in the Washington area, so we would stop off at a guy named Kevin Gerald, his church. My parents were friends with Kevin and Sheila. Kevin and Sheila had taken over her grandpa's church. So, and out of all this, I, are, are you guys you, all following Are you tracking along? with all this? 
So we had never met, but I knew her mom from being a kid. I, I like I I had seen so I knew her mom, I knew her sister. I so so we're out at dinner. Her sister who doesn't give up on things. Oh, she's asked, very, very she's, she's like, hey, since you're in town, my sister, I want you to go out with my sister. And I said, hey, listen, I'm not dating. I mean, I had people trying to connect me with girls yeah. from like Australia, and it was funny. So many, the majority, if not all, these girls were so much younger than me. And I was like, first of all, Wait, I'm just not going to date. I, I'm pretty. I'm younger than you. We'll get to that. Two years. <laughs> Two years. Two no, most half. of these girls were closer to Ian's age. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want like to go out on a date with the girl and then she's going out with Ian the next day, you know? Like, that'd just be weird, right? Like, it's just like, that ain't gonna happen. No, the answer is no. So we're out, this nice, nice restaurant in Chicago. She went, she kept saying, no, go out. And like, it was just one of those things I kept saying, no, I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. She tries to show me a picture on her phone. Here's what she looks like. I'm like, I'm not gonna look. Cause if I look and still say no, it's offensive. <laughs> so her sister and Allie and her husband Kent were supposed to fly out the next day to New York for a very important meeting and we're like stay in town with us hang out they're like no we can't we can't miss the meeting so I said okay well if you guys don't go to New York and you stay here let's all go out as a group and your sister can join us tomorrow night Didn't think it was going to happen. He didn't know my sister that well. <laughs> well, the next two hours, her sister was off my back, and her sister was talking with her, hus with her sister's husband. We have to cancel. We can't. We can't. So anyway, by the end of dinner, she's like, it's on. We're not going to New York. She's like, it's all scheduled. It'll be a group thing, whatever. Uh, it was scheduled. Apparently, you didn't know anything about it. I had no it. idea. I guess I wasn't informed on the plan until the next day, Monday, and I actually was at work. I was sick and she kept calling me and I was like, nope, not happening, not doing it. I don't want to go on a date. I'm not feeling well and I'm just not interested. Mm -hmm. And so then she goes to town on me because she's already committed <laughs> to this big night that I wasn't included on. And so then... So then we end up all heading in the same car yeah. on Monday night to, I don't know, what Yard House or some restaurant. You remember Yard House. I don't know, something like Yard House? Yard House. <laughs> yes, Yard House. <laughs> he remembered. I, there, there's no good way to answer that. <laughs> I can't because, anyway. So we're at some restaurant. Yeah. We're at, now, we pull up. Chicago is an interesting place to park and stuff. So, so I get out of the car. Her sister gets out of the car. She gets out of the car. So it's just the three of us uh, three walking Three of us, in. because the other two guys were going to go park the car. So I'm going to walk the gals into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So go. then we sit down, and as we are sitting down, my sister receives a call and gets up immediately. <laughs> and Now, you got to realize her sister, like, grew up doing beauty pageants, and so is, like, has, like, 12-inch uh, heels or whatever. Like She she's, goes... Flying out of the runs restaurant. Runs out of the restaurant without heels. saying anything to us. Just looks on her phone and runs out. And really at this point, you and I really haven't even had a conversation. We, we just were like, hi. Like, we're, yeah. So Dan and I are abandoned. We're stranded at the restaurant. And I'm sitting there. And I look out the window and I see the car pull away. And then I get a text saying, we'll see you in three hours. <laughs> And I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. So I immediately start thinking of an escape plan should the dinner go south. Do you still have an escape plan? I just want to know, like, do you no, still? No no. <laughs> no, no. And obviously it went well, because here we are now. Here we are. Yeah. Hey, so sometimes to all the single people, you're so, we're so busy, or not we, but you can be so busy trying to find the right person just beco by, versus becoming the right person. Mm -hmm. And God will bring the right person yep. at the right time yep. often when you're not Excuse even them. looking for That's it. That's right. That's right. So true. So when we first started talking, I guess you're in the talking phase. The talking phase, yep. Um, and those of you who know me know I don't, like on phone calls, if we talk for 30 seconds, that's a long phone call. 
right? So we would schedule our calls um, so that it would never interfere with our parenting duties or responsibilities, and we would literally talk for hours. It was probably the longest call I've ever, or calls I've ever been on. And I, I mean, as a girl, I can talk and talk and talk. <laughs> and those were some long calls. There but was some long calls. They were, but we were really getting to, to know each other. I, I'm surprised that the calls continued because, like, I was interrogating her. You were. It was like constant interviews. It was like, I mean, going there, where were you on this night of this day? It was like, it was like a police interrogation. Now, here, here's the thing. This is, we're touching on some different things, both with, with those of you who are single and then married. But, but, but if you're single and you're not dating or you, you are dating, we were on the phone for a long time in different states. A lack of physical contact brought focus to building an emotional connection. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, people start dating and there's so much of a physical connection, and if it moves on to marriage, they realize there's no emotional connection, yep. Yep. is that that actually ended up being a tremendous blessing because the focus was solely not, it wasn't because just I'm just physically attracted to someone, or there's just a physical connection, yep. there's an emotional connection. Yep, yep, that was true. So we had our long calls, and then you would fly out to visit. Twice a twice month. Twice a month for a few days. And this was in the winter. <laughs> so yes. obviously the phone calls went well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you Chicago haven't been to Chicago be in the winter time. It's brutal. So, yes, yeah, so then you would fly out to visit. We would spend as much time together as possible, you know, grabbing coffee before or after my work, my job, um, going to dinner. We would literally shut down the restaurants. Uh, and restaurants stay open till like, 2 in the morning. And so... So it would be, like, from, like, 6 in the morning to... Two in the morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. We'd watch football games. We were just getting to experience each other. Yeah, and now this might sound old school to you. It's not old school. It's just it's just biblical. But like we weren't like I I was in a hotel, but she wasn't coming back to my hotel room. Mm-hmm. I never saw her high rise. <laughs> it might sound old school to you, but like we weren't even hold. I didn't even hold her hand. Do you remember? I remember the first time I flew out, out to Chicago, we spent a few days, I'm going to be heading to the airport, <laughs> the first thing I did, the first physical contact. Fist pump. <laughs> what up? Am I romantic or am I romantic? I well, I'm not, well, she's not making this up. It was after, boom, <laughs> headed back to O'Hare, <laughs> back to, boom, fist bump. fist bump. Then it went from a fist bump to the... Awkward church. Y'all know the church hug? You know, it's just like, it's just like, it's like a little bit of shoulder contact, you know, on that until it finally got to to holding hands. Here's the thing. I think it's important when people are, are dating that you manage the connection where it doesn't get out of control. A Mm -hmm. strong physical connection can hide a weak emotional connection. Yeah. 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 Now, Now, age and circumstances can help clarify the appropriateness of what that connection should be and where it should lead next. That's so true. So that's about dating. And then we go to marriage. So when it comes to marriage... Because the connection is different when it comes to marriage. Right. It should continue to grow and deepen in marriage. When you stop working on your marriage, your marriage stops working. Why? Well, several things, but there's the busyness of life with work, maybe church, kids, activities, sports. I know for us right now, our youngest is playing club volleyball, so that is exciting, it's fun, it's all-consuming, it's busy, nonstop, all year round, every week, tournaments, so that's a lot of our time. Um, But then, you know, kids will leave the house, and retirement will come at some point. <laughs> some point. <laughs> and when that day arrives, you want to make sure you have a strong, a solid connection established. Otherwise, that day gets here and you're like, all right, now what? Who, you're like, who, who are, are you? you? Isn't it amazing people, you're like, you hear about people getting divorced after they've been married for decades? Mm-hmm. 
because once the kids are out of the house and once they, they move on, it's like they don't, even, they don't even know each other. We need to be intentional, not just when you're dating, but when you're married. We need to be intentional about that connection on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's like people will say, oh, what you do to get the girl, you should do once you get married to keep the girl. It's no, no, it's not even just to keep the, it's like, I don't just want to keep, like, you want it to be growing deeper. You want the connection to become stronger. Mm -hmm. Have you ever driven home from work or maybe just from the store and you're like, you're home and you know you got there, but you're like, I don't remember how I got here. Yep. I don't remember if the lights were red or green. I, I yep. probably took the same route I always take. That's how a lot of marriages end up. We're here and we're together, but how did we get here? Don't let your relationship go on autopilot. Yep. Yep. Marriages yep. take work. Connection yep. takes work. Sometimes we need to put the devices down. Yep. We'd say with kids, they're always on their devices. You'd be 60 years old and always on your device. Yeah. 71 and always on your device, mom. Like you can be, no, just, <laughs> you can, you can, we need to put the devices down and, and connect because what is the goal? Right. What's a desire, the goal? Well, a desire of mine is I want everybody to be happy. Kids happy, husband happy, church happy, life happy. First of all, everyone's not going to be happy. Nobody is ever. No. Oh, happy. No. Always. Everybody. No. no. Someone's no. not happy. Second of all, I'm exhausting myself in a losing cause. So then I'm exhausted. I'm depleted as a wife, as a mother, as a leader, as a friend. And that just doesn't work. It doesn't work because you're, you're exhausted and you're depleted. Mm -hmm. My mom... Uh, grills the best steak. Steak's my favorite thing. My mom does the best. But when I was a kid, she wasn't a great cook. She's in the room, I'm telling her. She, would, she wasn't a great cook because her mom didn't, not only, she didn't, her mom not only show her, didn't show her how to cook, her mom didn't let her cook. So it took some time. So as a kid, I remember she would make things like split pea soup. Oh, so good. I love split pea soup. I'll take it. If split pea soup can be good, it's good. <laughs> she, would, she would make spaghetti. And uh, my dad says, mm, because she would cook the noodles and the sauce with the meat separately. And us kids would get a little bit of sauce. But she'd give my dad a lot of sauce. <laughs> lot of she'd cook it one day, and the next day we'd have leftovers. Mm -hmm. The day after that, we'd still be having. The day after that, you remember those pots that like they're big. It's like this thing's going all week. As a kid, I did not like leftovers. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing: leftovers are okay. <laughs> you say spoiled, <laughs> and I'm 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 over it. I don't. I'm not <laughs> totally over it. As a kid, or as with food, leftovers are okay. And maybe even leftovers for your kids when it comes to food are a healthy thing so you're not giving your spouse leftovers. Yeah. And I think some people are making sure there's no leftovers when it comes to food, but we're giving our spouse leftovers. We're giving our spouse leftovers of our time right. because we're so busy right. taking the kids everywhere. We're giving our spouse leftovers of our energy. We should not be giving leftovers. That's right. And then I had a realization that I felt like I was giving everyone my best. Right, but I couldn't be giving my best of me when I was exhausted. I've got to be at my best in order to give my best. That's my goal. So that's, I don't give. That's you. the goal. So, that's, so it's not yes. getting leftovers. Right. Self care. Mm -hmm. When you're on an airplane, they walk through, and in, in case of an emergency, put if you're with a kid, put your oxygen mask on first. First. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Don't you love your kid? And I think sometimes what's happening is that we're doing that in our lives. We're so busy yeah. taking care of other people that we could better care for them if we put on the oxygen mask first. Now, here's the thing about connection, though. A lot of people are uncomfortable, even in a marriage, going into a deep connection yeah. because it exposes you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The person will see your weaknesses. 
Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll have to be okay feeling vulnerable, that they can really see you, that they can really know you, but then they can really love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's what we value in connecting. It's our attention. I like his attention. Giving each other our full attention and undiv undivided attention. Time. Yes. It's not just quality, but quantity. So we'll have consistent date nights or date days. And then also we say, okay, tonight I want, you know, let's be in bed by a certain time and not coming to bed exhausted from the end of the day. That's it's so good. Like you can have a, you can have a, a mobile phone, but you need to have a connection. Mm -hmm. You can be married, but there, there needs to be a connection. Mm -hmm. On your phone, you can normally see how strong the connection is. And if we pay attention to our relationships, the, there's ways we can see how strong that connection is. And if it's a weak connection, let's do something about it. Matthew 19, verse 6 says, So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, you hear this at a lot of weddings, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And we tend to think, let no one, no one out there separate. Well, how about in your marriage? Mm -hmm. You both determine, we're, we're, we're not going to let our schedule separate that. No one, nothing. We're, we're not going to let each other separate that. Connection is important. So important. So then we have, we just talked about having healthy connection, whether you're dating or you're married. The second one is communication. Communication plays a pivotal role in any relationship. Regardless of how we communicate, we're communicating in some way. Whether that's verbal or physical, you cannot not communicate. We are so different in our communication styles, but we are committed to growing every day. And it's exhausting. It really is in some way. But... But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's so worth it. When we were dating, I would uh, write notes in my phone ahead of time, um, of, ahead of our calls, um, so that I can be prepared for when we would start chatting, so I have some great questions to ask, figure out some interests to talk about. Um, and the focus and attention was on, on you. And then, as we settled into marriage, we got a little more comfortable, you know, got to know each other, and our communication changed, right? Now, it did. now I think out loud, and you're trying to figure out if I'm talking to you, or if I'm talking to myself, or if I'm on the phone. My stories have gotten longer. English is her first language, and she still speaks broken English. <laughs> Half sentences, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm like, I want just the bottom line. Yeah. Even if you want to go and fill in all and tell this and that, it's like, yep. what time are we leaving? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get dressed, and then after I get dressed, I'm going to put this in the microwave, and then I'm going to fill up the Stanley cup, because I'm a cool mom, i got to have Stanley, you know, and this, uh, well, what time are we, like, tell me all that, but first just say five, we're leaving at five. Now I'm going to go get dressed, and I'm going to do, cool, I'm good, I know what time. Right. But now I feel like you don't even want the details. It's like, just get to the bottom line and be done. <laughs> and but I've also had to realize that how I share is yes. more important than what I share. Yes. For, yes, for me, it's not exactly what you're sharing. It's how you're sharing it. Because I could be clear, and, but it doesn't come across yeah. very kind. No. Or... Very abrupt. <laughs> no, just Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. So let's give them some practical handles yep. when it comes to communication. Right. right. So one of them is timing on communication. Timing matters. Whether that, you know, the time of the day, where that individual is at emotionally, what they're going through in that moment. For us, certain conversations are not meant to be discussed right before bed. Like right before bedtime, she can just dump a bunch of stuff on me mm -hmm. and be great yep. and go to bed. Ah, and I'm up all night. night. Rest. <laughs> because she's bringing stuff like, I want to solve this. I want to do something. Like, right, I'm going to be up all night. Like, don't bring this up right before bedtime. Mm -hmm. She feels great. Yep. And I'm up all night waking up exhausted. <laughs> right. Or if you're message prepping, that's not the best time to go into an in-depth, serious conversation. Right. I know that. 
And then just the other day, you were getting ready to leave to a meeting and you asked me about a credit card statement. And of course, I want to explain it all, <laughs> which was not the best time because as I'm starting to talk about it, you're like, I got to go to my meeting. Well, then why'd you bring it up? It was just Again. a simple yes or no. Wait, this is not the right time to talk about it. We'll talk about it more this afternoon. <laughs> Timing. Timing. Timing on communication. Um, and then again, how it's communicated. Is it driven by emotions? What's the tone of voice? You speaking with clarity? You see, so, and sometimes it's not just what you say, it's when you say it, timing. Yep. And sometimes it's not just what you say, but it's how you said yep, it. Yep, yep, exactly. And understanding the end, other person's needs on how best to reach them. Um, and it's the words we use in our body language. So the looks, I can give you like, a death she, stare. She does not roll her eyes, mm -mm. but you give a... A death stare. They would not believe it, but she has a death stare. <laughs> yes, yes, I can give you a look if, if I don't agree with what you're sharing. I think someone said, I want to see it. They're like, I want to see it. I'm like, oh. no, I'm the only one who's earned that stare. You got to earn that. You got to earn that stare. <laughs> right? And sometimes I think we just need to listen. Proverbs Why did eight, you look at me? Sometimes we just need to listen. listen. <laughs> Proverbs 18.21 says, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So timing, how it's communicated, and then where it's communicated. Is it an appropriate place to have the conversation? Have you ever been like in a public place or around people and you clearly heard a conversation that made you feel uncomfortable and you kind of don't know what to do? You're like, kinda I'm uncomfortable like, for them. I didn't hear that conversation. It's just being aware of your surroundings. Uh, married people, here's some advice the doctor gave us so we're going to give to you. Mm -hmm. The bedroom is only for two things. You see, because she in the bedroom can want to have these serious conversations. All. Mm -hmm. The doctor told us the, the bedroom is for two things, for sleep and for sex. Okay, now that's for the married people, okay, <laughs> like that, uh, on that. So I, I thought people would cheer or something like that. I thought they would respond more. So, is this a... <laughs> so there's connection, communication. Number three is character. What do you look for in a partner? Is it based off of your values, your morals, your standards? Yeah. So, like, people who are dating someone, they're like, they have, he has so much potential. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, yeah, the relationship has so much potential for disaster. Mm -hmm. Do not date potential. Mm -hmm. Date character. Yep. We, the first morning... I remember this when I was out in Chicago, is that where we, we met up at a coffee spot, and she came in, and, and we're talking, and, and I'm looking at her, I'm like, uh, you're not wearing any makeup, are you? She's like, no, 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 I'm not. I'm like, this is awesome, because I want to see what she really looks like. You know those people, like, you see them the, for the first time without makeup, and you're like, <laughs> like, is this, are you the same person? Do you have a twin? Is this like an Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito type kind of thing? Like, I'm like, I don't know what's happening right here. Now, how much more important than physical look is on the inside? A lot of times people on their inside, they have much, a, a bunch of makeup. That you're getting to meet their representative. You're getting to meet who they're pretending to be. Like, I, I wanted to know what is her character? Mm -hmm. When it comes to character, what is her faith? I said, hey, can I have permission to talk with your sister and your, would it be your brother-in-law, right, who pastored the church? I said, because I want to ask them about your financial giving. Mm -hmm. because, because if God doesn't have where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And I don't want, just want to hear you say you love God. And the way I was raised, giving is not an issue. And I know if people have a problem with giving, it's like, now, I'm not saying that this needs to be for you. and you, that, that may seem extreme, but I'm like, I don't want. I want to talk with, it got, it got real quiet. I said, I want to find out if you're actually volunteering and how often you volunteer at the church. Oh, I know this sounds so extreme. I want to, know, I want to see on her faith. I want to see on her family. Yep. What's her relationship with her sister like? Mm -hmm. What's her relationship with her parents like? 
It can be so much like, you know, those people who are like, it's like they're still being parented. Like, okay, not, some, some people have an unhealthy relationship with either a mom or a dad. Not that, but is it a healthy relationship? Mm -hmm. How was she as a mom mm -hmm. with uh, Brooklyn and getting to see you out <laughs> at the soccer? I was going there during the wintertime, and it was pouring rain where it was like not quite snow, but it was not quite rain. It, like Chicago has this. and, I, and sideways, rain. sideways rain. And it was like in the 30s. Yep. Probably in, the, in the 30s and I'm out there trying to have an umbrella like sideways and I'm like I have on every single jacket I owned and you know I'm freezing and she's out there running up and down playing as, as Brooklyn's <laughs> playing soccer this and that cheering her on this and that like like how is how is family how is her work ethic I'm just telling you what I look for work ethic See, there'd be times that we'd be out to dinner, she'd be like, hold on, because she worked in private equity at the largest private equity firm uh, in Chicago. Or, uh, I mean, and so there'd be times we'd be out, out, out to dinner, I'm sorry, hold on, I gotta take care of this. She had a really good work ethic. What is her, what was, I want to see, what is her biblical worldview? Like, all these issues that are in culture today, all, all these issues on gender, all these issues on, you could talk about abortion, you could talk about all these, other, I want to know, what it, does, does she have a cultural worldview or does she have a biblical worldview? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians, it got real quiet in the room. <laughs> Second Corinthians 6, 14 says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers, mm -hmm. for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common, or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Right. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. So we have connection, communication, character, then contribution. So, and we are limited on yep. time and yep. I give limited contribution. So yes. I think we should be very short on this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Bottom line is when it comes to contributing in a relationship, it's not necessarily what and how much it's just are you contributing? Mm -hmm. I think most complain about what their spouses don't do rather than celebrate what they do do. Because I'm not, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yep. I do do. Do do. Uh, but they actually. I am not handy at all. I don't no. own a single tool. Any tools we have in the house are hers. Yep. <laughs> I told her that ahead of time. I told her like yeah. I'm not hand like I will break things. I will I and and she could complain about that. But do you know even just because I don't I don't do a lot of things around the house. But I do more things when she celebrates it. Yeah. Yep. Hey, thank you for taking out the trash. That makes me want to take out the trash more versus complain like if it, we need to contribute, but we also need to celebrate and not complain especially to other people. Right, right. Mm. That is so true. And then the last one is calling. We both felt like we were called to do whatever it takes to build God's house and help people. On Sundays, I just love to connect and talk with people. Um, and I mentioned that when we were dating. She actually said, hey, just so you know, I know you're in ministry. Like, I'm not Joyce Myers. Like, I will never speak. Never, ever. I will never go on platform and I will never hold a mic. Never. Never. No, I did say that. Never. Never. But I was just being obedient to what God has called me to do. Um, again, whatever it takes to help people. And I... It, it's now. looking at... It's calling. I wasn't yeah. interested. I, 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 don't, don't, I didn't want to be hitched to someone who wanted a mic, who's chasing a microphone or chasing a platform. I just want to know, like, because I told her, like, I feel called that my life, I want to do whatever it takes to reach people for the gospel. And that's going to require a lot of sacrifice. So you want to know, are we, are we called together in this? It doesn't mean that you're going to be a pastor. It doesn't mean anything like that. I'm just, your calling as a couple needs to be aligned. Yeah, yeah. If one person feel, has a calling to start a business, there's a great sacrifice with that. And the couple needs to be aligned yep. with that. Yep. It becomes an issue. When, when people have different callings, that's where you get one spouse serving at church on Sundays and the other doesn't even come to church. That's not God's best. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying now God can heal and God can restore, but we can look for those things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Like when you talk about calling, it's like I didn't want someone who's a Jesus fan. I wanted someone who was a Jesus follower. Mm -hmm. I love what Ecclesiastes says. 
chapter 7, verse 8. This is in light of doing it God's way. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be encouraging for someone. Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. Yeah. I want to read that again. Because someone right now is in a challenging time. Last week we talked about detoxing and unhealthy past relationships. And, and you can begin to not even see a future that is bright. But when you do it God's way, mm -hmm. better is the end of a thing than its beginning. There might be some sleepless nights. There might be some tears that flow. But better is the end of a thing than its beginning. Mm 